Jekyll and Hyde. Uh, does that ring a bell with you? Jekyll and Hyde. Uh, you remember, that was the novel that Robert Louis Stevenson wrote. Uh, the Dr. Jekyll was a respectable, philanthropic, kindly doctor who was anxious to help the poor and those who were sick and who deeded kindness in the city of London. And uh, he found within himself another character developing that had all the opposite feelings. Uh, Mr. Hyde, who was violent and immoral and wanted to roam the streets at night doing all kinds of hideous deeds. And, of course, eventually Jekyll found a drug that would release that Mr. Hyde and would enable him to assume a physical appearance that would give that Mr. Hyde the kind of expression that he wanted. Eventually, you remember, he found that he turned into the Mr. Hyde even without the aid of the drug. And, of course, that's what so many of us have experienced. We experience within ourselves a person that we can hardly recognize. It's a person that seems so hideous and so selfish and so utterly hostile towards all that we think of as the ideal life that should be lived that we cannot believe it's us. Some of us actually are afraid we are schizophrenics, split personalities. We find that uh, we go home at night planning to be kind and planning to give everybody a good time and think only of others. And uh, before we know it, we have destroyed the evening in yet another bite of selfishness and pettiness and bad temper. And what we have been sharing is that this double personality comes from the fact that there are two ways in which we can live life here on Earth. One of them is the way that was suggested by that man in the first century called Jesus. He said that his father was the creator of the universe and that he knew you by name and he knows you intimately. And he has put you here to do something that only you can do in his universe. And as you do it, you will begin to know him and to trust him and you'll become more and more like him. And as you become like him, you will be fitted to do what he has for you to do in the rest of the universe after life on this planet ends. And that's really the purpose that you're made for. But of course, this man Jesus explained that most of us have no time for that kind of stuff. And we say, forget that. We're not going to depend on some invisible creator to provide for us. We're going to provide for ourselves and we're going to get from this life what we need. And so we set out to try to get all the food we need and all the shelter we need and all the clothing we need, except the other five billion are trying to do the same thing. And so we spend most of our lives, the greater part of us, spend most of our lives trying to get food and shelter and clothing. And if you ask us why we're trying to get it, we'll say to keep ourselves alive so that we can get more food and shelter and clothing so that we can stay alive. But we don't really know why we're alive except that we feel like little animals, an instinct to stay alive. And so the life becomes very frustrating. It's the same with the desire for some sense of self-worth or value. We feel we're unique. We feel we're different from everybody else, and actually we are. Of course, the important thing to see is that the only person who can give us that sense of uniqueness is the one who has made us unique. But once we cut ourselves off from him and forget about him and try to establish a uniqueness in the eyes of the other five billion, we find that we have a little competition because they're all trying to establish their uniqueness and nobody wants to be interested in us. And so most of us end up dreadfully frustrated and feeling that we're worth nothing and feeling that we're a zero and that we're filled with inferiority complexes and that everybody is valuable but we. And so we end up frustrated and filled with futility. It's the same with happiness. We try to grab what happiness we can because we think we're not going to be here that long and we find that we can never somehow make the circumstances satisfactory enough. 
Somehow the circumstances are always unsatisfying. Something happens to prevent us having the perfect holiday that we always planned. Something happens to prevent us having the perfect marriage that we always planned. Something happens to prevent us having the perfect job that we planned. And so we end up very unhappy and very sad usually trying to simply blot out the pain and the unhappiness through drugs. And so we end up in this hideous situation that even when we begin to try to live the way we think maybe we should have lived all along, we find that we're unable to do it because our personality has become perverted. Because through depending on the world of things and people and circumstances, trying to live from the outside in instead of from the inside out, trying to live by depending on people and things and circumstances instead of beginning to give some trust to this God who has made us and beginning to concentrate on finding out why he has put us here and what he thinks of us and what he wants us to do, we have lived the other way and we've become little monsters that are unfitted to live the right way. And of course, most of us have tried to change, but it seems impossible to change. And actually it is because your whole personality has actually been perverted. And the only way that you can be changed is if the maker of the world changes you. And that was the purpose of Jesus' death. Jesus used to say, you know, when I die, all of you actually are dying. In other words, my death on Calvary is only a temporal expression of a cosmic death that I have died. I have taken the whole of the human race to death with me. And actually, you're, he called it your old self, you know the old self that wants its own way, that wants to get the food, shelter, and clothing that it needs for itself, whoever it tramples over to get it, that old self has been crucified with Christ. And that's what one of his followers said in Romans 6 and verse 6 in the New Testament in the Bible. He said, our old self was crucified with Christ. And actually, that's true. The Creator foresaw the kind of life that you would choose to live, and He actually planned for your destruction ahead of time. And so the life that He has allowed you to live now is the life that has actually been destroyed. He allows it just to take place so that you will see what it would be like. And the amazing thing is that we have been given the, a second chance. We're among the most privileged people because the creator of the world has allowed the perverted personality that you develop to continue so that you would see the effects of your own decision and your own choice. And yet he has given you 70 years on our, here on earth to choose the remedy for that that he has provided in the death of his son. And that's actually the only way to be delivered from that old self. What I'd like to do over these next days and weeks and months is to begin to outline to us all the kind of life in detail that the creator of the universe wanted you and me to live and wants us to live. And as you see it and as you hear about it, it'll just ring true. You'll begin to see, yes, that's right. It is the real explanation of your own personality, and it'll help you actually to understand yourself better. But the greatest thing is it will set before us all plainly what the kind of life was that he intends us to live and what the purpose of life is and how you yourself can begin to live it. So I hope that you'll stay with us over. It'll take me three or four years probably to do it. So you'll have to concentrate. If you want to get some of the recordings of the earlier broadcasts, we've been going now for probably about six months. And they're all available just by writing to the address that I'll give at the end of the program. So I hope that you'll stay with us and that you'll begin to think through this carefully because it is important to know why we're alive and to know why the Creator has made us the way we are. And so tomorrow I'd like to start with that. Start outlining the kinds of personalities that he's given us. Uh, try to outline the makeup of our personality and how one piece works with the other. And most of all, how you can live in trust of him and in love of him 
and live above the pettiness and the worry and the selfishness and the anxiety that comes upon us when we try to get from the world of people and things and circumstances what we can get alone from the creator of the universe. So I look forward to beginning tomorrow. So will you join us tomorrow to find why we're alive?